Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome to Stan the Energy Man. I'm Stan Osterman from the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies here on Think Tech Hawaii. And today's show focuses on one of my favorite forms of transportation. And for once, it's not just all about hydrogen or fuel cells. In fact, I've used this form of transportation virtually my whole life. And like many folks, I enjoy it a lot, particularly here in Hawaii. But like all technologies, this technology is improving every day. In the many cases, and in many cases, the technology is outpacing the infrastructure and the business models that defy conventional logic. We'll be talking all about bikes, and not just the concept of bike chair, but more specifically e-bikes, and the potential to help Hawaii meet its clean energy goals and clean transportation goals, and oh, by the way, keep all of us in better physical condition as well here in Hawaii. Um, we've got a guest, as a guest today, uh, the uh, owner of Ride Smart Maui, and uh, he's combined the efforts of uh, two baby booners, Lee Chamberlain, and his, uh, who was a former military pilot and retired uh, civil service worker with his wife, uh, Saman. And uh, she's a seasoned entrepreneur from the Bay Area. And uh, they fell in love with Maui 15 years ago and moved over here. So they've been in business uh, on Maui, and their business is electric bikes. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Lee Chamberlain. And uh, Lee, thanks for being on the show with us. I really appreciate it. Well, likewise, Stan. It's an honor to be here, and thank you very much for inviting me. Sure. Hey, tell us a little bit about how you and your wife got started in uh, doing what you're doing and, uh, you know, kind of your background that led you to where you're at right now. Well, Stan, um, I, um, uh, well, I'm 68 years old now, so I got a long background, I guess, but uh, just a quick summary is, is that uh, I grew up on a farm and um, I got introduced to aviation uh, when I was, um, I joined the military and, and the National Guard and um, got an interest in aviation. And then uh, I progressed into becoming a um, heli helicopter pilot in the Army and um, I served in active duty in the Army for a period of time. And then uh, I got out and flew commercially offshore as well as did, did uh, some seismic work um, in the mountains. Uh, exploring for oil uh, using long line techniques in the helicopter um, as a transport vehicle and a device to go ahead and move people as well as uh, equipment uh, in the remote accesses of uh, the Rocky Mountains. And then um, I ended up thinking that I needed to go back into um, civil service and so I ended up going to work are getting employed by the Drug Enforcement Administration um, back in uh, 83, and um, I became a special agent uh, with DEA and spent several years doing that. And then I uh, transitioned over to the U.S. Customs uh, Service at that time, and uh, we um, I went into the aviation uh, patrol business uh, along the southern border of New Mexico and. Um, Arizona and that, and so we, I flew patrol our craft uh, looking for drug traffickers penetrating the border, and uh, we did that for, I did that for several years, and then I trans transitioned back into the Drug Enforcement Administration, became a uh, special agent pilot with DEA, and then I uh, spent my career pretty much uh, going and supporting missions, ground agents uh, missions um, in Central America, South America and in the United States. And then um, after I retired from that, I um, was lucky enough to have the opportunity to go to work for Blackwater. I flew for Blackwater helicopters in Iraq for a little while and then transitioned over to another um, uh, company uh, and we did aerial surveillance, recon intelligence gathering. And uh, that company was L3 and then after that, I. Um, Started uh, riding motorcycles. Uh, <laughs> I got inter interested in adventure motorcycle riding, and uh, that concept is where we go ahead and take a um, heavy BMW GS dual sport bike and we ride uh, cross country and um, carry everything on the bike and live off the bike. And um, there's a 
seemed really nasty to me, and I did it for a couple of years, but I had some unfortunate mishaps. Um, the last mishap, I um, ended up um, shattering my left collarbone, broke my shoulder blade, broke seven ribs, punctured my lung. And then the year before that, the same month, I did my right side and broke my collarbone there. But anyway, the uh, last stint in the hospital, my wife came in and said, hey, you got to quit this stuff. You know, it's not, you're not going to continue be able to continue doing this. And so I was laying around recovering, thinking to myself, now what am I going to do now? Shoot. Oh, maybe I'll start riding bicycles. That sounds like a good idea. So then I... Um, thought to myself that uh, my wife can't keep up with me on a bicycle, and then I heard about these electric bikes and went down to San Francisco, took her with me, and uh, we went to a shop specializing in electric bikes. And then um, I had her try one out, and San Francisco is the perfect spot for electric bikes because of the hills and everything. So she got on one of the electric bikes, and she rode up the hill and came back and had a big smile on her face like everybody does, and they finished riding an electric bike. And uh, I said, well, what would you think? And she says, well, I think they're awesome. And I said, okay, well, if I buy that bike for you, will you uh, ride, electric, or ride bikes with me? And she goes, yeah, but you need one too. And I said, no, nah, I don't need an electric bike. And she goes, oh, yeah, you do. You need to try one out. So I said, okay. Tried it out. Indeed, I uh, sold on that too. And so I bought two bikes that day. And then um, I uh, have a number of motorcycles in my garage and anyway I started realizing I was spending more time riding my electric bike to my short distances uh, whether it be the gym or the store and so on and so forth I'd prefer that over hopping on my motorcycle and so um, we have a house here in Hawaii and uh, I got to thinking that man you know I started first of all I started missing my electric bike because these bikes were in California Anyway, I started missing my electric bike, and I, I got to thinking, geez, maybe I should get an electric bike here. And so I ended up getting a tandem that we converted into electric, and we, my wife and I, we would ride from a house that we have up here in Connor Ridge on the west side in Maui uh, down to the store, and we'd uh, load up the panniers on the tandem bicycle with pineapple, papaya, a gallon of milk. We had backpacks. And we still climb the hill together on that tandem at uh, 15, 12, 15 miles an hour. And um, I got to think, geez, you know, what a, what a great thing this could be. I mean, we could reduce the footprint of the automobile here in, in, uh, on the Hawaiian Islands. This is the perfect place for the electric battery. Um, you know, it would just be such a much healthier, cleaner way of life here. And so I ended up starting Ride Smart Maui with that concept, and we uh, uh, moved into, um, we went ahead and, and uh, uh, became pedigo dealers, and uh, we've been in business since about 2015, I guess, now. And since then, we've come to realize that we have a challenge with infrastructure, and we started the Maui Bicycling League after having attended a um, seminar on the on Oahu that was put on by Hawaii Bicycling League, and uh, we've been advocating for bicycle pedestrian pathways uh, for about four years now, hmm. and that's kind of kind of where it is. Okay. Well, I actually learned an awful lot by you going through that uh, introduction on air uh, versus just talking to you a couple of times, and the first thing I realized is that you're an adrenal adrenaline junkie that made it to the age 68, which is a real accomplishment because... All, all the guys I know that have motorcycles have usually given them up way long before you did because they broke every bone in their body doing the same kind of stuff that you did. And I love motorcycles, but I've held off trying to buy one because I know I'd probably break every bone in my body and, and be in the hospital for months <laughs> at a time. But um, you also are smart enough to listen to your wife when she gives you good advice, and uh, it seems like that seemed to have gotten you to where you're at today. And, and I had a great epiphany while you were talking there, especially at the end. You know, at one point in time, they were trying to put together a race to the sun for, with electric vehicles to the top of Haleakala. Now, I know people go mm -hmm. to, the, to Haleakala and ride the bikes downhill. Have you guys ever tried mm -hmm. to get an electric bike all the way up Haleakala? I haven't tried it. Um, I uh, know that we were going to do that on a couple different occasions, uh, but it's not really a problem to do. I mean, really? it's, uh, no, it, it wouldn't be much of a, an issue. I mean, there's, 
we've got the uh, capacities with the batteries we have now and the type of bikes um, that are available and the motors and so on and so forth, that would be an easy accomplishment. And um, so uh, it's not a great challenge, I don't think, in that regards. Wow. You had to work I, with your, your bicycle I, companies that, uh, that you work with that you, you um, sell. And uh, maybe with the Maui uh, Business Economic Development Board or Chamber of Commerce or something, and and see if you can sponsor uh, like a race to the sun on Haleakala with electric bikes and see what kind of uh, participation you get. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, that has been thought of in the past, and uh, it, um, there was a individual that did ride to the top of the mountain some years back and uh, did make that accomplishment. Um, and so that's been done before, uh, but a race to the top via the different electric bikes, that's kind of a cool concept. Yeah, I think it'd be I like that idea. Yeah. yeah. You could probably get a lot, like of, a lot of coverage. Colorado. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm good friends with uh, Frank DeRego and, and uh, that Maui Economic Development Board, so we could certainly probably make that happen. Okay, well, I'll be, walking, I'll be watching for that one. So what, right, are, what are some of the technical things about these bikes that make them different from a mountain bike or... You know, I mean, like in suspension and, and like how long does a battery, battery last, generally speaking? How many miles can you go? Um, how big a person can go on a bike? You know, I mean, are there weight limits or, you know, give us an idea yeah. of the technical side. Well, first of all, um, you have to realize that there's all kinds of different configurations of bicycles, period. And all we're doing is taking those all those different configurations, where they, whether they be beach cruisers, mountain bikes, urban bikes, commuter bikes, cargo bikes, all these different configurations of bikes, all we're doing is adding electric power assist to those bikes, okay? And um, the weight capacities vary depending upon the individual design of the bikes. And of course, Everything has a denomination associated with it, right? Mm -hmm. So um, obviously you can create anything for enough money. Um, right. But again, the cost of the bikes um, comparatively, that's always a big issue with people when it comes to talking about electric bikes. Oh, they're so expensive. But, you know, um, they're not really. I mean, for the <laughs> true bicyclist, yeah. not the person the, that goes the guys who the bicyclist, the guys who are spending money on a carbon fiber bike with titanium rims don't think your bikes are too expensive, I bet. Not at all, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I know people that have got ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars 15000 road bikes exactly. that have one specialty at all, at all. That's just one specialized purpose, and that's riding down the road. <laughs> Where I try to keep our electric bikes, um, you've got a good variety of bikes in the vicinity from um, $1,500 to $3,000 that cover all those different uh, things that we just talked about and can do a phenomenal amount of different things. But the thing about bicycling is, is that we have, uh, the, there's a different classes of riders, okay? And so the spandex class A type rider is different from the type of riders that would ride e-bikes primarily, okay? So the e-bike is more of a utility vehicle. It is a vehicle that would serve the purpose of replacing the car and completing those short trips to the, to the store and doing those type of things, reducing the footprint and the cost associated with uh, the automobile. You know, in a in a household, and that's the type of customer that I try to to reach out to. So it's everybody outside of that spandex type rider, okay, which is a different type of person. They're purists and they're doing it for one particular purpose, and that's for exercise and uh, the communion that they get with the other riders that they they ride with. Mm -hmm. It's a different type of purpose in that that, yeah. that aspect. Does well, that I'm, make sense? I, I'm yeah. in your I'm in your category and the guy that I work with is in the spandex category, so I get it completely. He's got a, a bike that I couldn't afford without getting a mortgage and um and I yeah. I've got a, a bike in fact I just took it into the store to have him rebuild it or not rebuild it but just do a tune up and it cost me like 200 bucks. But this bike is 25 yeah. years old, and it's a mountain bike, but I use it to kind of just honk around town here. In fact, I came to the studio sure. riding it today. 
and it, it's not super fast, but it's light and it's maneuverable and it's comfortable right. and, and I love it. And, uh, and even though I have yeah. another mountain bike that I've been using, I, I like the old one better. But um, I tell you what, Lee, we're right about midpoint, so I'm going to break here for a commercial, and we'll be right back to talk to you some okay. more about this stuff. Talk to you in a few. Okay. Great. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together, working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you. Keeping you safe. Aloha. Hey, look, aloha, and welcome back to Stanley Energy Man on my lunch hour. And we're talking to Lee on Maui, who runs um, uh, Bike Share Maui. Bike Share, is that right? Bike Share Maui. Ride Share. No, Ride, ride Smart. Ride Smart ride Maui. Um, we I've haven't got, got to the Bike Share yet. I've, I've got Beaky on, <laughs> on the mind because we're trying to get them on the back yeah. on the show here, too. But um, oh, wow. so we're we're gonna you know keep talking a little bit about the technical side. So you cater to the the more utilitarian bikes rather than the, the high speed road bikes and the racing bikes and stuff. And and um, and they come in all different sizes and shapes. I know that from the beach bikes to uh, you know really heavy duty stuff to delivery bikes to people that just want right. to kind of cruise around with a, a single gear and gooseneck handlebars. So. Uh, can you take any of these bikes and electrify them, or do you do you work with companies that that kind of have different model electric bikes in all those categories? What works best? Yeah, I, I um, represent a number of different uh, manufacturers that specialize in electric bikes: uh, Raleigh, uh, Turn, um, Emotion, uh, Ecomotion, uh, Magnum. There's a lot of different companies I represent, and I, I have a number of different bikes here. I have a rental fleet of electric bikes, and then I have a, a collection of different bikes uh, that I try to, I think that would probably meet everybody's needs one way or the other, okay? So um, I'm very fascinated by the cargo bikes, and um, I have the extra cycle, and I'm uh, in a position to carry the turn bike, which is a, the turn GSD. If the viewers want to look at a really, Great video and interesting concept. Turn did a really good job in, in presenting that particular model, which I got introduced to out the uh, Interbike in Las Vegas last year. But I think it's an awesome bike. It folds, it can go into the back of an SUV, slide in there, it stores vertically. It'll carry 450 pounds, it'll go 100 miles. You can put, it's a very versatile bike, it's a cargo bike, so you can carry a couple of your children on it, you can pull stuff with it, you can carry cargo, and you go touring with it. It's an extremely versatile bike, but that's the type of thing that um, I think would do well in people recognizing uh, substituting their, their car needs with mm -hmm. that particular bike. Do you have any images so, of these bikes on your website at all? Yes. Uh, okay. As a matter of fact, we have drop downs on our websites. Uh, and you go to rentals and, and sales, and uh, there's going to be drop-downs relative to a number of different manufacturers and a certain number of bikes. We don't have all the bikes from all the manufacturers on there, obviously, but we have selective ones that are popular among uh, most people. Okay. What's your website, by the way? So we didn't capture it to throw it on the screen, but if you just give it a shout-out. Yeah, out. It's, it's ridesmartmaui.com. Okay. And so folks can come and look at that and um, and look at them. I'm I'm actually kind of interested yeah. in that. Like I told you off air that um, I'm looking at um, doing some time on the Big Island, and um, I'm I'm probably going to be about 30 miles from Kona town proper, mm -hmm. and um, a right. little bit of a hill there. So I'm I'm going to have a little bit of hill time. Mm -hmm. So if it's got an average flat range of 100 miles, I should be able to do 30 miles with a pretty good hill on the front end. 
Um, do you, oh, you, yeah, no you, problem with that. Do you have regenerative braking like electric vehicles do on these bikes? Where it charges the battery when you're um, going, going downhill or putting the brakes I, on? Right. I've had some of those bikes that uh, I've tried out, and um, they're not a very popular um, item on the bike. And the reason being is you don't have the weight to generate the uh, amount of current necessary to charge the battery. You okay, don't have the okay. distances. Like when you brake a, uh, well, as a matter of fact, you don't even use a brake in a Tesla. When you drive a Tesla, you just let off on the uh, accelerator. And then she goes automatically into regen, which basically use yep. the same as a brake. So barely ever touch the actual brake in a Tesla. And so um, that works out efficiently because you've got 6,000 pounds that yeah. you're oh, yeah. basically decelerating, you know, yeah. so. No, we do, in, in our shop, we do uh, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles and they all have regenerative braking as well. So, but I, that's, mm -hmm. that's interesting yeah. though that on the bicycles it doesn't make as much sense, but that makes what your explanation tells us exactly why. That's that's great. But I'm, yeah. I'm looking at those cargo bikes. I'm gonna actually go back and look on your website and check these out, because uh, you know I, I love riding my bike, and the drawback primarily is that you know I've got a little pad on the back to strap a few things down, or I've gotta have a backpack on mm -hmm. the gear. That puts your center mm -hmm. of gravity kinda high. Um, so it, it'd be nice to have something right. that carries the cargo right to, to be on a bike. Yeah, well, I have an extra cycle also that uh, carries three kids on the back and has a drop-down sidecar that will carry 250 pounds and carry 450 pounds by itself. So that's a, a lot of weight yeah. that you can move. And, I, and with the power assist, it'll travel at 28 miles an hour. So okay. that's very efficient. Well, this is probably you know, and a, a good place to transition then into... Uh, infrastructure, because you know, I, I know that on Oahu here, the county's trying hard to improve bike lanes. We, we've got some new bike lanes on King Street and um, South Street, and in town, they're they're working on it. But you know, when you you live out in the suburbs or live in rural areas, um, like uh, one of my friends used to be a lifeguard, and he he and his his wife would ride their bikes from Kailua to Makapu Point. Um, if you're familiar with that on the on the Oahu. And yeah. it it's doesn't have much of a shoulder, let alone a bike lane. And one semi-tractor no. trailer going by can, can wipe you all over the, the pavement um, because the, of the draft and the wind and everything. So, um, you know, when you're using these bikes um, how on Maui, how are they doing with letting you mix with traffic and, and really being able to, to do what you said, and that is get cars off the road and use bikes for some of these uh, trips? Is there enough, enough of a shoulder that you have uh, ability to ride comfortably or... Are we all facing the same challenges where the, the bike lane is defined as a, a place where all the, the broken glass and metal from cars gets pushed to? Yeah, that, that's a primary problem, exactly. Again, that we're looking, when, you, when I think of the shoulders and people riding on the shoulders, um, I, I don't uh, think of the normal average person on e-bike all the time. I always flash to the spandex rider on the shoulders, you know, riding right. the shoulders and all that. So, again, um, infrastructure is key. I always uh, say, I go back to the theory of what came first, the chicken or the egg, right? So if we had the proper infrastructure, then people would, would ride more. I talked to someone yesterday, and, and they told me that they won't let their children ride uh, on the bikes because the fact that it's too unsafe. So I look at potentially trying to incorporate in the, in the urban areas that where people live, the ability for families to go ahead and give their kids some independence, like Stan, you and I probably had when we grew up, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I wasn't restricted about where I could go, but everybody's paranoid now because of dangers associated with what the automobile imposes people to go ahead and let their kids ride on bikes by themselves, right? So again, if we start developing the culture, and it is a cultural shift because Hawaii is very much an uh, automobile culture here. And um, all the rules associated with uh, the automobile are imposed upon the islands here, which really doesn't necessarily equate to the same as it would be on the mainland relative to uh, urban sprawl and supporting the urban sprawl concept. And uh, so, again, infrastructure is key. And yeah. uh, so, uh, 
not necessarily the shoulders of the highways, but inside the towns and creating protected bikeways and creating ways for kids to commute back and forth from home to school and those kind of things. And that's the kind of thing that I think is important. Yeah. Well, we'll have to get you back on the show, maybe with your wife, and, uh, and have no. the folks from Kauai yeah. come on the show and talk about um, what Kauai is doing uh, around Ka um, uh, Lihui to make it more bike friendly mm -hmm. in the town area. And, um, you know, maybe get some of our legislators to actually look at bike paths uh, in other states, or like you and I talked about around Washington, D.C., where we both spent some time. Mm -hmm. Some of the bike trails yeah. around the Virginia, D.C. area are just, I mean, you want to go out and ride. Um, they're so nice. Absolutely. You know, and we do have the Hawaii bike plan. And um, my wife heads up, Simon heads up the Maui Bicycling League here as the uh, president. And so we advocate for bicycle pedestrian pathways, and uh, we also um, take and, and refer to the Hawaii bike plan in everything that we do. Uh, the unfortunate thing is, is that uh, the Hawaii bike plan that has been in place as a statewide plan that's regionalized. Um, the focus has been forgotten in regards to supporting that document. And um, I'll give you an example of here on the west side of Maui, which I consider kind of an island on island. Um, we have the West Maui Greenway that was supposedly a uh, priority one project in the 90s to be completed within 10 years. It was all laid out, and it was the area that runs parallel to the Hanapalani Highway called the Cane Hall Road that runs from the Pali all the way to Lapone Point. That was supposed to be completed years ago, but there hasn't been one thing done yeah. up to now, and that's an unfortunate thing. And so now the purpose of that was to offset the possibilities of traffic congestion that they, the planners saw coming years ago. You know, they figured that we could have people riding bikes instead of driving cars everywhere, you know? Well, let me make a suggestion. We able to let me make a suggestion to you that I think we ought to try and, and do on all the islands and all the counties. You know, we just had all the mayors get together and talk about how important clean transportation is and how they all promised yeah. to have their fleet vehicles green by 2035 or so. Um, maybe mm -hmm. we, need, we need to put that back on the table with them instead of just referring back to that bike plan by the state and go back to the counties and say, Mr. Mayor, you know, and, and the city council, you guys thought about this, you know, the state thought about it a long time ago, and you just recently committed to clean transportation. That's what this is all about, getting people out of their cars right. and onto other modes of transportation. And there's no more efficient transportation than a bicycle, and there's probably no more convenient and efficient transportation than an electric bicycle. So how about it? Let's, let's start working on this plan. And, you know, I, I, I work with the legislators here in, in Honolulu a lot, and I, I can tell you they're, they're open and they're listening and they want to do stuff. Sometimes the fiscal constraints they have uh, curtail their ability to really do much. But you just got to keep plugging away at it. So I, I would say get your bike league right. to, uh, to start a campaign and have everybody just jot a note to their city councilman and their, and their state reps. And let's get some focus back on this stuff because I agree with you. I'm a bike guy. And everything you said today makes just a ton of sense. And um, here on Oahu, we don't have much available land to to do a whole lot of greenways on, but um, I'd say on Maui and, and the Big Island and Kauai and Molokai and Lanai, uh, it's not a factor. There's there's a space to do it and do it properly. And uh, we ought to be encouraging our, our um, leadership, our legislators uh, to do that stuff. So, hey, Lee, I wanna thank you a lot for being on the show today. And I promise we're gonna have to have you back on in a couple months for an update and maybe uh, get some feedback from your city council and legislators on how they wanna help you get more space to ride bikes on, but thanks for being on the show today. I appreciate it. My pleasure, Stan, and we'll look forward to another opportunity. Great. All right, that's going to wrap it up for Stan Energy Man this Friday. It's Aloha Friday, and uh, have a great weekend. We'll see you back next week on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha.